good shot, Weary. <laughs> You shot, Kenny. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Come on, shoot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Here, you win Watch a drink. the cloth, Riley. How long we gotta sit here? Until Studs gets here, that's how long. You shot, Bowie. Watch the cloth, Haggerty. Polly, I thought you said we were going dancing. When are we going dancing? If you heard what Weary said, we're waiting for Studs, so keep your trap shut. Studs, that's the guy that's supposed to be taking me out tonight. He's your date. Where is he, then? He's out with a nice girl. Get to you later. I'm with Lucy. I feel I could run a hundred yards for a touchdown. I could, I could hit a homer with the bases loaded. I could high jump clear over the moon. Mother, I'd be home early. I, I don't understand, Lucy. Does your mother think you're Cinderella? There'll be other nights. Will there, Lucy? Bill, please take me home. One more. Just one more dance. This was our last dance. <laughs> hey, Lucy. Don't keep running away. It's a new year, ain't it? Lucy! Lucy! 1920. Can't ever be 1919 again. Not in a hundred million years. Uh, so what? Where are you going in 1920, studs? What are you gonna do? The world ain't a year older tomorrow. It's just one day older. One more day, a day that's good for nothing. Who is it, please? It's William Lonigan, Miss Miller. William, what in the world? I gotta talk to you, Miss Miller. All right. Kind of late, huh? I guess I shouldn't have come. Why did you? I came because... Because when I was in high school, in your class, you, you said one time... Would you like to sit down? How are your mother and father? Okay. And Lucy? Oh, it is still Lucy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I still see her every once in a while. What's the matter? Nothing. I don't know. At 18, you're not supposed to know everything. You got a nice figure. Anyone ever tell you that? No. Well, you have. You. I guess I shouldn't say that. I... It's always nice to receive compliments. William, give yourself some time. You've got your whole life ahead of you. And you'll find it can be beautiful. But if life is so beautiful, 
What are you doing sitting here alone on New Year's Eve? I missed out, William. I missed out. You're shot, Kenny. I made a New Year's resolution to shoot better pool. When it gets me mad. <laughs> hey, it's hot. Happy New Year, Kenny Killarney. <laughs> The gang calls me studs. And that's because that's because broads like you don't leave me alone. Lucy, and everybody else calls me William or Bill. You're still thinking about that nice girl, huh? First is first, and second is nobody. while your mother and I spend half the night waiting. It's New Year's Eve, Patrick. He said he might be out late. Where were you, William? With the other guys. The other guys? The other guys? A bunch of bums no better than he is. Get off my you back, know, will you? I couldn't afford to stay out late. You know why? Every night, the I same old job. record. Yes, sir. Payton on a scaffold, 12, 24 hours a day. What's the matter? Ah, another county heard from. What do you want? There's so much noise, I can't sleep. Yeah, I hope you're satisfied. You see, you're Turn you're off the patrol. Your as well. You're the one that's doing the shouting, Patrick. Go on back to bed, Francis. Wait a minute, I'm not finished with you. Let him go, Patrick. He's tired. You go in and get undressed, and I'll come and kiss you goodnight. I don't even feel like I belong to this damn family. Maybe I got switched to the hospital. Maybe I belong to somebody else. It could happen. How would you ever know? You're too hard on the boy, Patrick. Not hard enough. He should be thinking about what he's going to do with his life and about marrying a decent girl. The boy's not ready for marriage. You know that, Patrick. <laughs> When I was his age, I was married and started a family. Well, maybe William won't have a family. What do you mean by that? I say a rosary every night, and I make a daily holy communion, and I make novenas that God will give him the call. 
priest, is it? If that boy has the makings of a priest, I have the makings of a shriner. Not what I know, Patrick. It's what God knows. And if God wants a boy or a girl for his holy work, and that boy or that girl turns his back on the will of Almighty God, he or she won't never be happy. And they stand in grave danger of losing their immortal souls. This last year sure was a crock. Well, I got my whole life ahead of me. Like the lady says, life can be beautiful. Hey, Polly, my old man call you? Yeah, I know. Jack, you throw a jack. What kind of cards are you playing? Hello. Hello, Lucy. Pick a card, Lucy. Let's get a drink. State Street was a prairie. <laughs> that guy's gonna get a hernia carrying all them books. Arlene, I can't talk now. Yeah. Yeah, I'll meet you. Uh, near the boathouse. I got an idea. Let's get a drink. all around. You would like to order tea? <laughs> yeah, four teas. <laughs> Your class. Miss Stubbs, when was the last time you seen a girl as beautiful as she is? Uh, not since the last time I was asked to judge a beauty contest. A girl like you don't need no lipstick, no powder. Nature give you everything you need. Who are you kidding, Buster? Not only beautiful, but modest. Walks into a joint, knocks him dead, and don't even know it. What I like is the sound of her voice. 
Please, lady, say something. How about a drink? <laughs> <laughs> say, Glamour, ain't I met you someplace before? Uh, you already said that, Larry. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm uh, just trying to place the face and the uh, figure. I got it. You got a regular beat on State Street. I saw the cops pick her up for hustling. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Cops don't know a lady when they How see one. How long did they give you? 30 days. Oh, say, oh, there ain't no justice in the world. Wait a sec, you guys. A lady like you should be living in a nice apartment like on Lakeshore Drive. What do you say, fellas? Let's get together and ship it and help her live in style like she should, huh? Yeah, I'll do that. Me too. What do you say, lady? If... If you boys ain't kidding. Oh, of course we ain't kidding. Then after we get you in the apartment, we'll get you steady. Maybe one of us. All of us. one again, I guess. you have to go to college for? I told you, Bill. I want to meet new friends. I don't see what's so difficult or complicated in understanding that. You mean your old friends ain't good enough? Well, that's it, ain't it? Go on, say it. You're tired of your old friends, and, and you're fed up with the neighborhood. I used to like the neighborhood. Now it's all changed. Maybe you're the one that's changed, Lucy. All right, I'm changed. Is that so terrible? But 
I can't understand why you have to pick a college so far away. You know, they got good colleges in Chicago. I know that, but I'm tired of Chicago. Well, what's, what's wrong with Chicago? Nothing's wrong with it. It's just a place that I've lived in all of my life. And now I'm getting out. So you're walking out of me again. Lucy, Cinderella, Scanlon. Only you ain't leaving no little glass slipper, because you got big feet, just like all the rest. Look, Polly, it's either you or Harry. What do you mean, me or Harry? We ain't the same guy. Who do you like the best? I like Harry. I love you. But Harry's got the ring, and he wants me to marry him. What do you want to get married for? Look, Polly, my sister's going to have another baby and they're going to move me off the couch. I've got to have another place to sleep. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, I know so. All right, you know so. But look, we could figure something out. You never told me about this guy, Harry. How long have you known him? Three months. Three months? You're thinking of marrying him, huh? Well, I know three months isn't very long. But, Polly, he's got the ring. The ring, the ring, the ring. Polly, don't get mad. You make me mad. <laughs> Aren't you at least going to tell Stug? I mean, it isn't something that happens every day, you know. Yeah. Well, are you going to tell him or aren't you? <sighs> tell him yourself. You ain't humpback. Holly, that's not a nice thing to say to a girl you just said you love. Besides, I think it should come from you. Unless you're ashamed or something. You weren't ashamed, are you? No, I ain't ashamed. It's just... Hey, Studs, meet the future Mrs. Polly Haggerty. Polly must be out of his ever-loving mind. Congratulations. Thank you, Studs. Sure, she looks okay now. And having her waiting for you every night wouldn't be hard to take. But having her sink her hooks into you and handcuff your dough. Still, if it was me and Lucy... <laughs> I'm supposed to be your father, and as such, try to make something out of you. Make you to be a decent citizen. Are you listening to me? Yeah, I'm listening. All right, then. Now, you children are all your mother and I have got. And we worked hard for you. And we don't want to feel that we did it for nothing. Hey, Mom, you got a dollar? Got a dollar. Every night dressing up like some two-bit gigolo. Somebody ought to give you the lathering you deserve. Bust that pretty nose of yours. Maybe it's settle down, get a job, and make a living. And then you wouldn't have to ask your mother for a dollar every time you wanted to take out some, some chippy. Patrick. I've been looking for a job. You've been looking down a pool cue. That's where you've been looking. Oh, Lay off, will you? A pool room bum. That's what you are. You've been giving it to me for 20 minutes now. I ain't no pool room bum. No, he isn't, Patrick, and it's unfair to say so. That's for me. I'll get that. You stay where you are. Hello? Oh, yes, 
Yes, Lucy. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. He's busy now. He can't. Get out of here. I'll give him the message. What is it? All right. What's the idea? What'd you do that for? Shut up. He's right, Patrick. You shouldn't have done that. Now, look. This is my home, and nobody is going to tell me what I should do or should not do in it. And you don't have to look like it was the end of the world. Lucy just wanted to tell you that she couldn't keep her engagement with you tonight. Now look, I want you at the shop the first thing in the morning. You had no right. You had no right to hang up on her, damn you! Patrick! First thing in the morning, do you hear me? Now get on out of here before I give you the ladder you deserve. I am getting out. Oh, no. Patrick, you had no right to hit him. I'll hit him again. The ungrateful little pup. After all I've done for him, defying me. William, don't go. Patrick Lonigan, how dare you? Dragging my son, my own flesh and blood, driving my precious firstborn baby Billy, into the house. He's not a baby anymore. He's supposed to be a man. Someday, someday, damn it, if I don't make the lousy world take back everything it's doing to me, someday I'm gonna make the world and plenty of the punks in it eat what I gotta eat. Someday I'm gonna bust loose like hell on wheels, and when I do, Hello, studs. Give me a shot. them guys over there. I ain't seen them in here before. They're my protection. From the mob, huh? Belt me. Okay, I got a job for you. When? Right now. 
I'm expecting somebody soon, huh? Gino, give me a heater. Now, all you gotta do is a point and a squeeze. What time is it? Midnight. On the nose. Benito isn't usually late. Hey, sit over there. Hey, hey, over there. You'll be coming down them stairs. All you have to do is a point and a squeeze. for sure. I ain't going to work for the old man. That's my idea and nothing. Become a dental technician. Free job placement in America's fastest growing profession. Learn to play the saxophone. America's favorite instrument. Play for dances, records, radio, Big money. Lead your own band. For free information. mustache. Maybe I'll be damn important someday. A politician or something. I know I got luck. Four aces stacked for me in the cards. Well, I do. I got to. Are you 
your mind's looking for jobs in weather like this. Come on, it's freezing. Here's one. Traveling salesman for the Pittsburgh area. Yeah. Yeah, Pittsburgh. How about that? Uh, I was in Pittsburgh once. You find yourself washing your hands all the time, you know. I wouldn't take no job there if I was you. Hey. I'm gonna go into business for myself. Yeah? Yep. How? Now? All I gotta do is rent a store. How are you gonna pay the rent? Yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Hey, here's one. Wanted. Uh, experienced mechanic. You an experienced mechanic, Paulie? Hey, Paulie, look again, huh? Maybe there's an ad there that says wanted. An experienced pool shark. <laughs> Salesman, chauffeurs, electrical engineers. I got a good idea. Let's, Let's get, get a, a drink. Take your coat. <laughs> Listen to that storm. I'm glad you got here before it started. I wonder if the rain really does cool things down. It's just our imagination. makes home feel so warm and comfortable. Why don't you try drinking the coffee? new motor. 
Mozart recording for my music appreciation class. Mozart has always been one of my favorite composers. I enjoyed listening to almost everything he ever wrote. Would you like to hear it? I played it for the class today. They loved it. Such a wonderful group this year. So interested in everything I played for them. Listen to this opening passage. Isn't it lovely? I've been reading a new biography of Mozart. He was such a genius. Imagine he began to compose music when he was still a child. Later, of course, life became very difficult for him, despite his genius. Never enough money, sometimes not even enough food. But still, he continues to write this glorious music. Sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. But most of all, because I have offended thee, O God, who art all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. Amen. God bless you, son. God bless you, Father. So you don't want to be a house painter. You got to be a saxophone player. So I buy it. Eighty-three dollars, forty-six for lessons, and then you go hawk the thing. And don't tell me you didn't. Don't tell me because I found it. I found the pawn ticket right in there. Well, I'm satisfied being a house painter. And I don't know what gave you the idea that you're better than me, and I don't care. If you don't want to do what I do, all right. But I know this. You've got to do something. Got to get a job. Got to get a job. There are great dental technicians, just like there are great violinists. A dentist can make a good pair of false teeth, or he can make a pair that feel like the Brooklyn Bridge inside a man's mouth. All a question of talent. You see this instrument? Let's see you pick it up. Ah, a man with talent, obviously. You did that very nicely, son. Employing no more than your index finger and thumb. Congratulations. You have the touch. When are you, do you think you're going to put me to work? Nine o'clock, Monday morning. And so we can start right in Monday. I want you to take a set of these home tonight. Here is one I'm making for Colonel McCormick. Every mouth has 32 teeth. Learn their positions and how to identify them. Shouldn't take you more than a couple of hours. Lucy, I have to talk to you. Lucy, did, didn't you hear what I said? I have to talk to you. Just a moment. That's all right, George. I'll be right with you. Lucy, I've gone and done it. This man says I got talent. It's just like playing the violin. Bill, I don't know what on earth you're talking about. Look, look, Lucy. You see these? Well, a man says I got the touch. Everybody's got 34 of them, and tonight I'm going to learn to identify them in the mouth. Whose mouth? Bill, you're drunk again. No, Lucy. I'm not drunk. I swear I ain't. I'm just trying to tell you what this man told me. <laughs> Miss Scanlon, we're going to be late. I'll be right there, Mr. Wynant. 
Bill, put those terrible-looking things away. They ain't terrible-looking, Lucy. They belong to Colonel McCormick. This man says I got the touch, and he says, he says if I work real hard, and if I concentrate, and if I study every night... I'm sorry, Bill. We're late already. Lucy, this is a big break for me. You can see that, can't you? It's gotta happen. I ain't getting any younger. I ain't a kid no more. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm waiting for. drinking. Weekdays, I'm up at six. Paulie starts hacking at six. That ain't stopping him. Paulie didn't almost fall off a scaffold last Monday. Well, ain't your old man got insurance? Yeah. I'm so glad you're working now. Your father must be very proud of you. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? He even gave me a raise last week. Uh -huh. Missed it, Kenny. Well, studs. We saw an old friend of yours today. Hmm? Lucy Scanlon. Yeah? Well, what, uh, what'd she have to say? Ah, she just wanted to know if you're still living in the neighborhood. What's the matter? Did I say or do something wrong tonight? Is it Lucy? You saw her before you came here tonight. That's it, isn't it? But you heard she was back in town. It's always so difficult to know how we really feel, isn't it? No, it's, it's not so difficult. Lucy may be in town. That don't mean I got to see her. Yes, it does. Because even when you aren't seeing her, you'll be thinking about her. As you have been tonight. When you first came in, I knew something was wrong. I, I just hoped that you'd talk about it. You usually do. When you didn't, I... I knew it was Lucy. Okay. Maybe Lucy is in town. Maybe I'll see her. But that don't mean things have got to change between you and me. Doesn't it? When you first came to see me, you were always intoxicated. I knew you would be, and yet I look forward to your visits. I thought I could help you. And help myself. I was so lonely. And I hope... Uh, I hope for what happened. Even though I knew it was wrong. Not wrong because you still love Lucy. Wrong because of the difference in our ages. And wrong to have to hide how we felt from other people. Being so ashamed. Wrong to have to confine our lives together to this one little room.
Look, I'm sorry about tonight. I think I'd better go. Right now? I got a real long day tomorrow. Otherwise, I wouldn't be clearing out so early. I'll be around again tomorrow night, at the same time. Give it to me. I was going to put it outside, where it always is. Give it to me. So we won't see each other tomorrow night. This is it, huh? private stock. Good for corns, sinuses, and thinning one on. <laughs> let me see, that'll be three dollars for the setups, two dollars for the whiskey, five dollars altogether. Five dollars? I didn't ask you for a lease on your joint. <laughs> you wouldn't want me to break the law for less, would you? No, it's not. Come here. Hey, Paulie. You tell our friend what we have in mind, huh? Yeah, come on, Paulie, tell him. Yeah, tell him. Hey, Paulie? Yeah, yeah, okay. Huh? Tell him. <laughs> okay, uh, first you order me where he's uncle and then get a drink. Uh, Studs? This is Jim Doyle. Hey, hey, Mother Josephine, bring Studs a glass. <laughs> Hi, Studs. I ain't, I ain't seen you in quite a while. Oh, come on. What's going on, boy? Yeah, come on, Paulie. Don't forget, we're gonna need studs. Yeah. Need me for what? You all said studs? <laughs> then get this. We're all going into business together. We can open a nightclub. Mm. Mm, where are we going to get the dough? Uh, <laughs> show it to him, Paulie. Uh, <laughs> 5,000 smackers signed by my father-in-law. He gave it to me this afternoon to get a medallion and buy my own cab. <laughs> Only Paulie ain't gonna buy no cab. <laughs> Tomorrow, my Uncle Jim is gonna take him down to the lawyers and they're gonna draw up the papers for a nightclub. The way we figure it, Prohibition is here to stay. So why not make some jack out of it like everybody else? Kenny here will be the bartender and uh, Mr. Doyle here is gonna see that we get the necessary protection. <laughs> <laughs> well, how does it sound to you, studs? Where do I come in on this? You, you're you're going to furnish the alcohol. I am, huh? You're in the paint business, ain't you? The paint business uses alcohol, don't it? Weary, what's my old man going to say? Why, your old man. You do the buying, don't you? So buy a little more. <laughs> 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 we got it made, Studs. Hey, Studs? We got it made. <laughs> Let's have another drink on it, eh? <laughs> Eileen is going to be proud of me for a change. No more hacking, no more crazy hours. I'm going to start living like a human being. Sorry for your misfortune. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> 
Wondering where you lied to How about a cigar? Drinks being served over by the sink. Probably thinks we're the ones responsible for his drink. Prettier than ever. I'd like to ask her for a date. Uh, what am I thinking? Not at Polly's wake. Guess you were the last of Haggerty's friends to see him alive, Monaghan. Must have happened when you left Mother Josephine's alone last night. Still had a check on him for 5000 It's too bad he couldn't have waited to be clipped by that truck. Yeah, I said the Republicans. They went and steal the election from Cox by crookedness. Well, where did you get all that insight, though? Hello, Lucy. Hello, Bill. Isn't it terrible? Poor Paul. How are you, Lucy? Right now, I feel like I'm being crushed to death. And son. Good to see you again, Lucy. It's good to see you, Bill. It's a divine warning to all of us. We're here on this earth for only a short time. Poor Eileen. Why did it have to be Polly? Why couldn't it have been one of them? Why couldn't it have been one of his rotten, stinking friends? Don't listen to him, Lucy. He's no good. None of them are any good. Polly's dead now. But he loved me. Only they made him ashamed of loving me. I was a woman, not a broad. And a woman was someone who set traps. According to them, marrying me was a trap. Having the baby was a trap. Don't go home, Polly. Hang around, Polly. Shoot another game of pool, Polly. Have another drink, Polly. They didn't have anybody. So they didn't want him to have anybody either. They didn't want him to love me. But he did. At times, we were alone together. He loved me when he wasn't listening to them. He loved me. At night, alone together, he loved me. He loved the baby, too. He loved the baby. Oh, you should have seen him with the baby. You should have seen him with the baby. <laughs> Bill, I've dreamt of a sign like that since before you were born. Quite a guy. Yes, sir, quite a guy. And now I got the right to see Lucy. Ain't had a drink since Polly died. Got 1,200 bucks in the bank.
she moved away. Lucy moved. And she never even told me. Nobody told me. What was I thinking? That she'd sit home and wait for me? That when she decided to move, she'd blow a bugle? Yes? Oh, I'll come back some other time. No. Please stay. This is my niece, Catherine Banahan. This is William Lonigan. Hello, William. Catherine, would you take his coat, please? You... you've been in Chicago long? Just a week. You're gonna stay. I hope so. That's... that's real good. My, uh, coming here so late, you see... See, your aunt and me, we're, we're old friends. Yes, I've told her all about you and Lucy. How is she? I wouldn't know. Haven't you seen her lately? Not since Polly Haggerty died. The least she could have done was tell me. Tell you what? That she was moving away. Oh, where? How do I know? You want a ring? No. No, I got a better idea. I'll... I'll give it to her. No, really, I couldn't. It... Sure you could. Go on. It's a present. No, no, really, I couldn't. Sure you could. <laughs> now, give it back for a second. Now, put out your hand. Come on. Come on, put it out. There. There. Welcome to Chicago. I want to thank all my good friends and my constituents for re-electing me as your alderman. <laughs> If there's anything in my power that I can do to help any one of you in any situation, please call me. Hey! Who'd you vote for, Lonergan? You? And from now on, I expect things in this ward to get better. I'm sure they will be. Hello, Stud. Things are getting better already. So I see. Let's all have the drinks on me. Hey, don't say I'm no lady. I didn't say you was no lady. I said you was a pig. Don't say I'm no lady.
Okay, baby, you asked for it. to me, young fella. You ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> That's what you think. Get what out of here. What are you talking now. about? Francis Riley, you have been charged and found guilty of the crime of rape. For this, I sentence you to 10 years in the state penitentiary at Joliet. <gasps> Paulie's dead. And weary would be better off dead. Lucy's married. Out of town somewhere. Just Kenny and me now. and go shoot a game of pool with Kenny, maybe take in a movie. Ah, what the devil. I'm here and she's waiting. Nice girl, Catherine. I love you, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. No, you don't. Or else you realize how very much I want you to be happy. And how good I know you really are. Nobody ever called me good before. Maybe that's because nobody ever loved you like I do. I know you're moody. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember that it's not me you're mad at, but, but yourself. Do such crazy things. What crazy things? Oh, like giving me Lucy's ring the first time we met. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that was kind of crazy. First, I hated that ring. Then I was glad because it, it meant that we'd begun without any secrets. I'm 
happened to Aunt Julia? She ought to be home by now. Probably got stuck in the rain somewhere. Would you like a cup of coffee? Ever notice something? A certain kind of woman is always the same. My mother, your Aunt Julia, you. They never know what to say next, so... So they offer you a cup of coffee. Coffee would be good. I wish I thought it were nothing. What do you mean? There seem to be so many things you hate. Like what? Me sometimes. I only knew why. When I was a kid, I went to parochial school. I took a streetcar every morning. No matter how early I got up, I'd get to the corner just as it was pulling away, so, so I'd run after it. It never went so fast that, that I'd lose sight of it, but it would never go slow enough that I could catch it. Now everything, everything seems like that. You're not a kid anymore, Bill. You don't have to run. And you don't have to hate. And you can just stop now and look around. Hello? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, all right. Bye. That was Aunt Julia. It's raining so hard, she decided to stay downtown and take in a show. Come here. studs. I met a pig last night. <sighs> How's your love life? I don't know. Catherine and me, we, we drink a lot of coffee. How's your work going? Oh, it's going okay. My boss hardly gets anything done. He's so busy playing the stock market. Even my Aunt Julia's thinking She's about scared. That's why she talks so After much. How much did you she, she loves well, me. Isn't very much when you and she puts out for me. And course, she's scared. Bank, but everybody says I, I feel sorry bank. for her. I wish I could tell Bill, her. Bill, you haven't heard a word I've said. What? You haven't heard a word. But when I'm with her, I feel all alone. Like I never even seen her before. Not like I used to feel with Lucy and the gang. What are you looking for, Bill? What do you want? I don't know. What do you want? A 
husband, home, children. I guess that sounds pretty bad to you, doesn't it? No. Sounds like my mother and father. Funny, but uh, I can never remember them having any fun. What's your idea of fun? Never growing up? Now you sound like your Aunt Julia. But who the hell am I? Wanting so much and thinking she ain't enough for me. Our lunch is served. Maybe I ain't good enough for her. Go ahead and eat it. I'm, I'm not hungry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say it's certainly great to stand up here on this stage, look out there, and see this beautiful, vast ocean of smiling faces. And I want to tell you that an entertainer like Kenny myself, finally got a job. He should have stayed in the pool hall. The jokes were better then. Everything was better then. Oh, I'm not going to use the gun because we're going to have fun now. Will you freeze it, Kenny? Yes, sir. It's a funny thing about guns. I got a friend of mine. A friend of mine's in a hospital. He's been all shot up. He's got about 25 bullet holes in him. What happened? He walked into the black... Bill, please don't drink anymore. Fire! Fire! He did. Will you stop nagging? I got a friend of mine, so stupid, he thinks Pickled Herring got to be reported to the dry squad. Well, it ain't funny, Kenny. You're acting like a slob, a clown, a foul ball. Knocked in his door and he told the salesman this. He said, look, I'll make a deal with you. I'll ask you a question. If you can't answer it, you're going to pay me $25 because you're so smart with all those books and everything. Please, Bill. Why don't you leave me alone? All right. One has three years. Do you really want me to go? It doesn't lay eggs. The salesman thinks and he says, uh, I don't know. You got me. Here's your twenty-five dollars. What's the answer? My friend says, I don't know. Kenny been in tonight, Charlie? Kenny's in Toledo, then Detroit. There's a postcard came from him a couple days ago. He's around here someplace. Ah. Hi, Charlie. Detroit next, then Louisville, then whatever else they pay to hear the jokes. Regards to yourself and the Mug Lonigan. Kenny. Seems like I never got a break. I always figured something big was going to happen. But every time I look around, it's another couple of years. One of these days, I'll be 30. And no place to go but down. I called you a couple of times. Did you? Yeah. But I didn't get any answers, so I... I thought I'd drop around and see how you were. Uh, what have you been doing with yourself? Oh... Just working. I, I would have come around sooner, only we... We've been kind of busy at the shop. What's the matter, Catherine? Aren't you... Aren't you glad to see me? Bill, I'm going to have a baby. What did the report say? It's negative. That means Catherine ain't... that she was wrong. That everything's all right. That means she's pregnant. Well, ain't they supposed to have some kind of pills? Something that would... that would... Uh... Well, you know, Doc. Look, regardless of what you've read or been told, there are no pills. Well, there's supposed to be other ways. No way I'd be interested in. Okay, okay, forget it. No, why get sore at me? 
How much for the test? Put it back, keep it. Look, Bill, I assume that what happened wasn't the result of just a single evening together. Then why don't you want to marry her? I don't know. Is it because you're afraid of feeling boxed in? Yeah. A lot of the guys fight against that? Yeah, I guess that's a part of it. What's your mother think? Is that a part of it, too? My mother? My mother would be against any girl I wanted to marry. How old are you, 27? 28. Isn't that a little old to be living at home? Always wait. Don't she ever give up? Why don't she go home? And the governor is quoted as saying that despite the stock market crash, business could look forward to the coming year with greater assurance. But at this very moment, a line of anxious depositors stretches for five blocks up State Street to the doors of the National Exchange Bank. The station has been personally informed by the bank's office. Charlie. Sorry, studs. Closing up. Charlie, where are you going? I have to get to the bank before it closes, get out the money, otherwise I'd be wiped out. Already lots of people lose their shirts. Come on, studs. scratch out a living painting. Except now there ain't gonna be room for two. So from today on, Bill, you're gonna be on your own. Surprised me. We had a heavy wind last night. It broke one of our windows. I'm trying to find all the pieces so I can have it mended. Father, I have to talk to you. Of course, William. Uh, by your foot there, there's another piece. No, uh, they're not making glass like that anymore. What's wrong, William? Everything. 
You know, it's my own fault that window's broken. I knew it was loose. I could often hear it rattle. Yes, it's foolish not to fix a thing in need of mending. Father, Father I, didn't, I didn't come here to talk about windows. William. Do you know where you're going, son? No, Father. I don't know where I'm going. Well, as long as you don't know where you're going, why don't you sit down a minute? I try, and I try, but nothing happens. What do you want to happen? I don't know. What are you afraid of, William? I ain't afraid. I haven't seen you in quite some time. I think the last time was at Paulie Haggerty's funeral. You were drinking with Paulie the night he was killed. You were drinking with Weary the night he raped the girl. Has it ever occurred to you, William, that under the influence of alcohol, you could have been Weary or Paulie? God spared you, William. And now you're afraid he won't spare you again. Isn't that why you're here? I'm different than Polly. And I'm different from Weary. I'm... You're in pain, William. This is your trial and tribulation. This is the time when you need someone close to you to help you. Is there anyone you love, William? My mother. Why don't you talk to her? Everything I do wrong, she blames on someone else. It was different when I was with the gang. Now Polly's gone, Weary's gone, Kenny's do gone. Do you love your father? I guess I do. Why don't you talk to him? I just saw him. He, he needs someone to talk to himself. What do you want out of life, William? I want Lucy Scanlon. Remember her? I baptized you both. Her family moved away years ago. Do you still see her? No. Lucy wanted me to be important. Well, I ain't never going to be important. Why not? Because I just ain't got what it takes. Because when they were passing out brains, I didn't get my share. Do you think it's just a matter of brains? What else? I'm asking you. Well, ain't it? Jesus didn't think so. When he chose his disciples, he didn't go among the very learned and wise. He chose simple people, fishermen, the pure in heart, men who are able to give love. I don't understand what that has to do with me, Father. You've got love in you. And that's what you're afraid of, William. Why are you afraid? That somebody will take advantage of you? That people won't think you're as shrewd and as smart and as tough as the next person? Do you know what happened in the world today? Fortunes wiped out. Savings lost. People full of grief because they've lost their money. The real tragedy is that too many people feel about love as they do about money. They think love is something you buy with gifts and presents. Something you own. They do not realize that love is a giving of yourself, of sharing. They do not realize that the greatest single thing in this world is to love someone and to be loved. All my life I loved Lucy. It didn't do me no good, Father. Are you sure it was love? How well did you know Lucy? What did you ever share with her? And was she ever for one moment interested in you? Or was Lucy just a vain hope? One more projection of the ambitions you never expected to realize. You're right, William. You are different than Weary and Paulie. They never knew anything was wrong. You know. But you won't take the next step. What? What is that, Father? Catherine Banahan came to see me yesterday. She told me about the child. What else did she tell you? That she loves you.
Catherine. Catherine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about everything. I love you, Catherine. Go away, Bill. Catherine, I love you. Go back to your gang. There ain't no gang. Then go somewhere else. You've got to listen to me. It's too late, Bill. You, you still love me, don't you? Not anymore. You, you told Father Gohuli you did. Because I thought you were good. Someone who loved me and love our baby. But I know you never will. Yes, I will. I've got to love you. I've got to love you. I got it.